The innocence of a child is what makes them precious beings in this world. That is why throughout the month of November, as we observe Adoption Month, we're encouraging you to adopt a child. Everyone needs love. Start with a child and change their life for the better. Thank you so much for joining us for another viewing of the Jamaica Magazine on this fine Tuesday. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Please stay with us. We have more coming up. Do your part to prevent mosquito breeding. Mosquitoes will breed in any container that holds water. Tightly cover water storage containers such as drums, barrels, buckets and tanks. If this cannot be done, pour cooking oil on the water surface. Punch holes in all tins, plastics and beverage boxes to prevent the collection of water before disposal. Cover all tires or fill with dirt to prevent water collection. Scrub all vases once per week to remove mosquito eggs. Use mosquito repellents to protect yourself from mosquito bites. Dispose of garbage properly by placing in plastic bags and securing properly to prevent water collection. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, November 14, 2023. The Ministry of National Security is sending a strong warning to persons who are engaging in false reporting of bomb threats that they will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Portfolio Minister Dr. Horace Chang says these actions are not only irresponsible but also illegal. In a release, the ministry says law enforcement teams have responded to and investigated over 45 false reports of bomb scares targeting schools, healthcare facilities, courts and other institutions. Dr. Chang says the repercussions of these hoaxes are far-reaching as they disrupt daily lives, essential services and public order, as well as cause unwarranted fear and anxiety. The National Security Minister is urging the public to remain calm, vigilant and to not succumb to panic. The public is being urged to report any suspicious activity immediately to the police. An appeal is also being made for everyone to refrain from participating in or propagating such hoaxes. Dr. Chang says the ministry is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all Jamaicans. The government of Jamaica and the Inter-American Development Bank have signed a public-private partnership project preparation facility. The 1.25 million US dollar technical cooperation, which was signed last week, is expected to accomplish two objectives. These are selecting projects that will have a positive impact on the Jamaican society and delivering the best internationally available expertise to structure contracts that have been prioritized. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says the country will be provided with funding to develop projects that can be brought to the market. The significance of it is that it provides us with a pool of funds to develop projects that we can bring to the market and attract private investment uh, for our infrastructure needs. So we're very uh, grateful to the IDB for this sort of innovative structure. And this just represents the beginning. Uh, we hope to, to build on it and to uh, be able to attract others to contribute to this project preparation facility. Dr. Clark says that of the 1.2 million US dollars the IDB is providing, 750,000, with the remainder coming from the government. Through this partnership, Jamaica will be able to pursue innovative transactions to build out the country's infrastructure. Parliamentary debate has begun on the National Council on Drug Abuse Repeal Bill 2023. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton tabled the repeal bill in the House of Representatives last Tuesday. It will allow for the integration of the NCDA into the Ministry of Health as a department. This includes the transfer of assets, rights and liabilities of the Council to the Ministry. The team from the Transformational Implementation Unit has been working with the Ministry on the development and implementation of the change management plan with a transition plan developed to guide the movement of staff from the old structure to the new structure. These plans were signed off by the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, the Jamaica Civil Service Association, 
Service Commission and the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Dr. Tufton reveals that while the agency will no longer be a public body reporting to a board, the structure will remain the same, but management will now report to the Health Ministry's Permanent Secretary. The functions of the entity will increase. In addition to its current responsibilities, the NCDA will now be responsible for the National Mental Health Prevention Strategies, becoming the responsibility of the new department. The management of the Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Helpline and the UMATA chat line, which caters specifically to those 16 to 24 years old, will now fall within the remit of the department. Development of the department structure for the NCDA is being spearheaded by the Public Sector Transformation Unit of the Ministry of Finance, along with a steering committee that will be established to oversee the integration process. The integration process is targeted for completion July 31, 2024 and is part of the public sector transformation and streamlining of government services. The government continues to provide infrastructure support to farmers that promote safe food practices. The latest is the communal milking parlor in St. Thomas that will benefit small dairy farmers from Hillside in the parish. They are now able to milk their cows in a clean, sanitary environment and eliminate harsh conditions such as milking on the trees and in temporary sheds. The redeveloped facility was officially handed over by Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining, Floyd Green. He says this new facility will also help to drive milk production. So this new parlor undoubtedly comes as a blessing to the farmers here. We know that the farmers here are resilient. We know that in and out of season, they continue to contribute to agriculture. So it is critical that the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining produce and provide them with the resources they need to be better. Further development to the facility includes the installation of solar panels and a bulk storage tank for milk. Chairman of the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, Dr. Derek Deslandes, says the communal milking parlor is part of an effort to return milk production to where it once was and to give all farmers the opportunity to earn an income. We are trying to provide them with the, with the facilities, we are trying to provide them with the technology so they can become more efficient and they can make more money. And finally, three major parks are slated to undergo significant upgrading at a cost of $117.5 million. They are the Jag Myers Park in Black River, St. Elizabeth, the Neville Antonio Park in Port Antonio, and the Rudolph Elder Park in Morant Bay. This is being done under the Urban Renewal and Development Program of the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. Acting Senior Director in the Urban Renewal and Development Branch within the Ministry, Raymond Poiser, made the statement in a press release on Monday. Mr. Poise emphasizes that the parks will create vibrant, family-friendly spaces which will greatly enhance the quality of life for residents. In addition, the green spaces will be renovated to enhance temperature control to mitigate the urban heat island effect created by too many buildings and infrastructure. Mr. Poiser also indicates that upgrading of the three parks is part of the government's thrust to provide recreational spaces in urban centers to improve the psychological, social, and physical benefits to residents. The projects are at varying stages of the procurement process. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. The powers that are given to us under the um, state of public emergency are on top of all of the other law enforcement things we do. So Operation Relentless continues in certain spaces where violence is significant. We add in emergency powers on top of that. The combination of all of that gives us the results we need. state of emergency allows us to impact the people who intelligence says are doing violence.
Jamaica House Weekly is next, where we bring you highlights of what happened in the office of the Prime Minister this past week. It was a packed schedule for Prime Minister Andrew Holness last week. Addressing crime, supporting investments, ensuring proper development planning, and securing tenure. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Marjorie Gordon. In his capacity as Minister of Defense, Prime Minister Andrew Holness took decisive actions last week to curb ongoing gang violence that claimed the lives of several persons, including three children. Among the measures declared was placing the entire parish of St. James under a state of public emergency. Government must respond. And the fact that these things keep recurring is more so a testament to the nature of the beast that we tackle. It is also very clearly demonstrating that when we act and we are not supported in action by the extension of the emergency powers to finally bring to heal the beast, then the problem continues. Prime Minister Holness also gave orders for swift amendments to the Offences Against the Person Act and further adjustments to the Firearms Act by year end. These will increase penalties for capital murder and illegal possession of firearms and bring clarity to certain provisions. We have it within our purview in this House to create the deterrence, to use the laws to create the deterrence. Perpetrators must have no sympathy. They must face the full, unequivocal, unblunted force of the law. The Prime Minister also had this to say about those who harbour criminals and those who know about criminal acts but fail to speak out. I want to make that absolutely clear that if we're going to really bring to heel the beast of crime that is loose in our land, the ecosystems that protect the criminal must also be dismantled. He said amendments would be pursued for the common law provision, misprision of felony, which speaks to this type of offence. They are under a duty under our existing law to come forward. It is an offence under common law for which several of our recent cases have been prosecuted using this common law provision. And we intend to utilise this much more in our pursuit to bring this terrible beast of murders under control. On to infrastructural development, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says work has started on the rebuilding of town centres in three parishes. They are Morant Bain St. Thomas, Port Antonio, Portland and Bernard Lodge in St. Catherine. It's part of an island-wide initiative under which plans are being developed for Lucy in Hanover. That town is definitely at risk. So it's not just about developing the town, we're going to have to look to redefining the boundaries of the town and maybe shifting uh, some of the services and facilities there, including maybe a realignment of the roadway. Assessment for Negril in Westmoreland is also part of the short-term plan. That area we are now surveying it to find lands to see where we can put in a development that will bring order to that area. Addressing stakeholders at a town planning symposium on Wednesday, the Prime Minister gave directives for the National Works Agency to increase its inspection of government buildings. The directive came on the heels of the 5.6 magnitude earthquake on October 30. We have the engineering capacities, they're not all in government, but I think we, we need to leverage them. We will have to step up the inspections to make sure that you know, we identify the gaps and weaknesses structurally before, you know, there is any other event or any other catastrophe that may come as an after event. And as the country continues to construct taller buildings, Mr. Holness asserted that the inspection process must be more robust. So I'm saying here publicly to 
the municipal authorities to the planning authorities that the requirements must be properly interrogated. And we know that even when we approve on paper, there are those who believe that their buildings are not going to be inspected and therefore they undercut and shortchange. For those people who continue to believe a narrative that nothing is happening, that's not true. Change is happening right before our very eyes. Part of that change is the opening of a 30 million US dollar state of the art production line at Pepsi Cola Jamaica in Kingston. This expansion by Pepsi will no doubt contribute to even further improvement within the manufacturing sector. Manufacturing is a critical sector of our economy and it is one of the drivers of job creation and economic growth. Mr. Holness was also in Montego Bay for the opening of the 15 million US dollar Barnett Business Center. No one takes up that magnitude of resources and makes that investment unless they were certain about the returns, unless they could calculate the risk, unless the environment was stable. I am certain that this new development is going to put even more pressure on our labor force for labor. The delivery of houses was another priority for Prime Minister Holness in the past week. In Clarendon on Friday, 60 keys were handed over to proud recipients. These are part of the NHT's development in Hummingbird Meadows and Money Musk Country Club. The policy of the government as it relates to houses is to increase the pace at which we are bringing housing solutions to market in conjunction with partnerships with the private sector. Back at Jamaica House, Mr. Holness met with the newly appointed general manager of the Inter-American Development Bank. The Prime Minister also met with junior mayors as the country observes local government month. After a little history of the layers and functions of the Office of Mayors, he congratulated them on being chosen to represent their parish. It is a distinct privilege to have that. It looks very lovely on your resumes. Uh, it shows that you have uh, the, a, a, a very elevated sense of public participation and making a contribution to the development of your country. And I'm hopeful that many of you will use this as a springboard for entry into the political field. Uh, it is something to aspire to. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next week for more of the news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Finger licking jerk chicken, health fish and bami, we run down yam and banana, roast bread fruit, sweet potato pudding. Mm -mm, Jamaica food sweet. This November is Eat Jamaican Month, so let's make a pledge to use more local produce and less foreign goods. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Jamaica undoubtedly has one of the best cuisines in the world. Our fresh natural herbs and spices complement each other so well that they create a signature taste that separates us from other cultures. Watch now as Cara Pessoa cooks it up in the kitchen. The Ministry of Agriculture and the Fisheries recently outlined the Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign, an initiative designed to strengthen food security and safeguard Jamaica from global threats. One aspect of the campaign is the drive for Jamaicans to grow what they eat. One of our local chefs will prepare a dish from produce from her garden. So we're going to start with passion fruit because it's passion fruit season. This is how our pulp is. And I'm just going to add it to our blender. with my ginger that I already pre-washed and cut. 
add that first. I tend to use a finer strainer. And the more fashion you, you put in there, the more um, color you'll get. And the benefit again of eating and drinking what you grow is your health. And at this point now, I'm going to add my sugar. And you mix till you dissolve your sugar. So here you have it, homemade passion fruit juice. Growing smart does not require a big farm. A small patch of land in your backyard, couple pots, and you can be on your way to harvesting produce for the dining table. Whatever and however much you manage to grow, put it to good use, cooking up healthy traditional or new dishes for the family to eat. It's what Kara has been doing. My thing is make your hand, turn your hand, make fashion. So how it came about is my aki mashup, boil it out. So I needed to use it. And I came up with Alfredo. And it is vegan, it's healthy. Every ingredient that I have in here, it's local. So I'm gonna start off with, or you can use any onion. I just think the red onion looks nice. So I'm gonna just julienne this, because I want it to stand out. Cut out the stem, so then you get them loose. And then here, I already pre-cut some tricolor bell peppers, or what we call sweet pepper, red, yellow, and green. We have some string bean and some julienne um, carrots right here. We have some local cherry tomatoes, which, you know, grows well in some garden. Garlic, which, you know, is a must in our seasoning. And from here, I have some dry seasoning. So I have Italian herb, I have some dried basil and my salt and pepper mix. And I'm also going to cut up a little scotch bonnet because, you know, Jamaica we say. This recipe takes about 30 minutes, as long as you have everything prepped. The longest part is probably sauteing the vegetables. From here, we move to our stove. So on medium heat, well, I have my pasta about to go into the boiling water. You can use any pasta you want. I'm just using what I have in the house today, which is some tagliatelle. From here, I'm going to turn on my skillet. You can use coconut oil, if you feel, or olive oil, um, or whatever oil you have on, at home. And our oil is now hot. Cook your onions first, because you don't want raw onions. The next would be your carrots and your green beans, because they're raw, I didn't blanch them. So as you can see, the pasta is boiling, and I'm gonna add my garlic. Now this is an Alfredo, so I put a lot of garlic. At this point, I'm going to actually add my aromatics which is I have some fresh thyme here. And you're developing your flavors, you're building. I'm going to also add my dry herbs, which is my Italian, and basil. At this point, if you have extra ackee, I'll put a little bit in there. And you can use any vegetable you want. And then I'm also going to add my peppers at this point. And then I'm gonna check my pasta, which is about al dente right now. And at this point, you can add your coconut milk from your coconut tree if you have any coconuts that are dry. I also have my scotchy. You can put as much or as less as you want. And from here, you can serve it in a bowl. You know, a deeper dish is probably better for pasta. Give it some height by twisting it. So I'll sit up as much as you want. So I'm going to Garnish it with my basil, my fresh basil. This is called chiffonade, where you ribbon it. You can also garnish with parsley, which I have growing at home as well. And clean up your plate, don't be like me. <laughs> and there you have it, aki pasta alfredo. And there are other dishes like this one that you can use aki to create, such as curry aki pasta, the traditional sawfish with ackee, and here is something you may not hear of often, ackee pockets with cocoa bread. The message to our consumers who depend on us to provide wholesome and nutritious food to their household is not just to eat, 
but to eat smart. November is Parent Month and yes, we know it is difficult at times to balance life and being an involved, supportive parent. So, up next we bring you some effective techniques in parenting your toddlers. And a lot of times people don't feel like they really have an answer to everything. And the truth is that that is the reality. But there are different things that people can try. Um, we're not saying that any one thing works for everybody or that you even get the outcome that you want immediately. Especially when you're dealing with young children, you might have to try something several times before you see a particular result. So for example, if it is that you want a child to learn the difference between right, right and wrong, a lot of times in the past we use pain to teach that this is wrong, right? Um, but we find that ultimately when you hit a child, what you're teaching them to do is when I don't like something I should hit and I should lash out. What you want to try in a situation like that, you can try removing privileges. If there are things that the child might love to do or even the age old timeout. Um, you know where you say listen for this period you have to sit by yourself, there's no communication, there's no talking. Sit down and be still. Sometimes you have to physically just hold your child and help them to breathe through it because you have some children where they have so much emotion and so much anger and they want to get it out that it's really difficult for them to regulate it at such a young age. And so you have to physically hold them, put your hand on them, help them to breathe through it until they're calm. And with children, even if they don't understand necessarily um, the big concepts of right and wrong, they can sometimes understand tone, right? And tone is not the same thing as lashing out and using um, certain words and calling them different names. Tone is being firm and saying, I do not want you on this. So for example, if a child keeps going off on something, you might have to take them off it 10 times, right? And continue to reinforce with the same tone and consistency that you do not want them on this. And also for younger children, sometimes you have to be the one to remove whatever it is that you don't want them to interact with from the environment, right? Because they're so young and so impulsive, you can't necessarily leave it to them to understand I shouldn't touch this thing, right? So that's how we deal with the younger children. Before we close the pages of today's magazine, remember that children are a gift from God. If you've ever thought of sharing your love with a child, let it be now. Don't hesitate to reach out to the relevant authorities to find out how you can get the process started. This is where our program ends for today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow on this same station or over on our website at gis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.